Welcome. Today we're going to show you a demonstration of the world's first point of care bedside MRI system from Hyperfine. The system's been six years into development and we're prepared to show you is the system, the workflow, um, wheeling it in, docking at a bedside, loading a patient, and then carrying out uh, exams uh, courtesy of an iPad. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in. Chris, will you help me uh, load our patient in? Be happy to. Patient stays in her bed the entire time. We're going to remove the, the pillow. And Chris is placing in a cushion to make the patient more comfortable. I've lowered the bridge, which is a foldable bridge, so we can get through doorways more easily. Uh, once you've docked it at the head of the bed, you lower the bridge and close the any remaining gap with the bed itself, because the bed's on the floor. So um, this is how they do it at the ICU at our collaboration sites. We just pick up the patient and slide them in just a couple of feet. Chris, I'll let you do the countdown. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. And she's in. So once the uh, patient is loaded, all you have to do is power up the system. Uh, we use a standard power outlet, 110 volt, 15 amps. So any normal power outlet that will do. And uh, hit the power button. And within a couple of minutes, you'll be scanning. So I'm going to let the scanner power up. It's controlled by a tablet computer, uh, in this case, an iPad. So once we've logged in, we just have to make sure that we get connected to the uh, Wi Fi hotspot of the uh, scanner's computer. Everything is self contained here. Uh, there's no other equipment anywhere nearby uh, for the scanner, it's all on board. Uh, all the um, electronics to run the scan. There are no, there's no need for cryogens, there's no need for prevention. The permanent magnet, the local magnet is very safe. It's very connected to the scanner's hotspot. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and join our Zoom meeting really quick so that I can share this screen with you. And Chris, would you admit me into the meeting over there in the top right corner? All right, I'm going to share my, my screen. The broadcast. And in a moment, you'll see the video disappear and you should see the iPad. We use just a simple web interface and you start with the patient page where I'm um, either in the middle of the right number or I'm just in a uh, simple number. Um, and uh, but here's where you put a name. I'm going to enter in Jane Doe. And for birth date, uh, I'll just make up a date. Um, and you put the biological sex and weight. So I'm either in pounds or kilograms. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, indication of demo. And a very interesting feature uh, is that you can leave an email address uh, for the scan uh, so it can send to you at the end and send you anonymized images um, so that if you're a busy physician at uh, your ED or ICU, uh, you can get those right away. So um, once we have the patient information, uh, you can pick from a set of uh, 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 protocols, and I'm just going to skip right ahead and narrow it down to just one sequence of interest to be able to scan. I'm going to hit play. Um, when I powered it on, it immediately did its power on self test and already did some initial calibration. Uh, it's going to do one more quick calibration to make sure it's on resonance with the scan, and we're already underway. Uh, as soon as uh, you see this progress bar change processing, uh, and then my colleague Chris, if he holds the microphone up a little bit closer, you can. Uh, uh, you secure the microphone. Um, you should be able to hear the buzzing of the scanner. That's the fast one that we can hear the scan one. 
the unique feature of our system is that within 10% of the scan completion, um, we will see the first images coming from the subject. So uh, in just a few seconds, about 15 seconds from now, we'll see a montage of images that are uh, covering the entire brain, 36 slices. The slices are five millimeters thick and uh, one and a half by one millimeters in plane. What you'll see initially will look like a blurry set of images. But that's because it's only using 10% of the data. So there it is, uh, the first 10%. And as the scan progresses, it's going to get crisper and crisper and become that full resolution uh, that we desire. And uh, you'll get that update about every 10%. So if you were in an emergency setting and you saw something obvious, like a large mass effect, a midline shift, or undiagnosed hydrocephalus, or a large bleed, you could uh, immediately uh, do something uh, to intervene with that patient, take them to interventional, uh, an interventional suite, or give them therapy in another way. Uh, you don't even have to complete this. Uh, that's the 20% update, and you can already see the orbits, the cell side, the gyri, and the ventricles coming in. Uh, so this is going to take about another four minutes. Um, we're going to cover some of the more frequently asked questions about the system while we wait for the scan to complete. Sure, Brian. Thank you. So. Um, one of the questions we often get is about system mobility and weights and elevators. Can you talk to us a little about that in real-world usage? Sure. The system is very lightweight compared to a conventional fixed MRI scanner. Uh, it is 600 kilograms, about 1,400 pounds, uh, but you can wheel it around on casters. It has a power assist motor, uh, so that you use a joystick to drive it. Uh, it's intentionally a size that can get through doorways in a hospital. Uh, we've even taken it on elevators at our collaboration sites and we've gone floor to floor uh, to go from one part of a unit to another part of the unit on a different floor. So uh, it's, it's the world's first MRI that actually moves around in use. Thanks. And talk to us a little bit about the, the sort of the product roadmap, as it were. A um, common question is about extremity imaging. Um, the design I often share with people looks sort of like a sandwich cookie, an Oreo cookie with two magnetic poles. And uh, there's a you know Faraday cage around the back. Talk to us about extremity imaging and where Hyperfine is headed. Well, our, our general motto at Hyperfine is if it fits, it scans. And we will someday scan all kinds of body parts that fit into our 30 centimeter gap between our top and bottom pole shape. But our first indication this time is the brain imaging, uh, age is two years and up. And we have a head coil uh, integrated for that at the center of the magnet. But we have in the lab scanned other body parts. We've scanned cervical spine and neck, elbow, wrist hand, uh, knee, foot, and ankle. Uh, and in future iterations of the scanner, uh, we'll have other coils uh, that accommodate those body parts. And uh, those will be coming in a future FDA cleared device uh, as, as we prove that those applications make good images. Thank you. And what could you share with us across, right now the system is currently deployed at five different um, IRB sites. Um, can you share with us a little bit of information about those sites and the pathology and the examples that they're observing? Sure. We're at five sites currently, and they're across different use environments. Our, our initial use environment was the neuro ICU, mm -hmm. and our very first partner was Yale New Haven Hospital, just uh, 15 minutes away from where we are here in Guilford. Uh, we are at another ICU at Good Samaritan Hospital on Long Island. Uh, we're also in the ED observation unit at Good Samaritan on Long Island. Another ED site is New York Presbyterian Brooklyn Methodist. Uh, near New York City. Uh, we are in the neurosurgery outpatient clinic at the Hospital of University of Pennsylvania, where we focus mostly on hydrocephalus. And finally, we're uh, scanning babies as young as three months old at the Advanced Baby Imaging Lab um, that is part of Brown University in Rhode Island Hospital in Providence. Got it. And then about Hyperfine overall, um, a, a new name, a new company uh, to the world. Could you give us a little bit more on the history of Hyperfine, um, its founding and its relationship to sure. um, its more, uh, more newly or recently launched uh, sister company? Yes, so we um, are part of a family of startup companies here in Guilford that um, all share the same founder, Jonathan Rothberg, who is pretty well known as a serial entrepreneur and has had a lot of success and other medical technologies such as DNA sequencing. And um, after successful uh, exits from those companies, he, um, he, uh, um, he took that uh, wealth and founded a whole new set of uh, companies. Uh, the oldest of the new set is Butterfly Network. And they have had an FDA cleared handheld uh, ultrasound probe to, uh, for the last two years. And that ultrasound probe plugs into an iPhone or a, an iPad or now even uh, certain Android devices, and you're able to get point-of-care ultrasound with a $2,000 probe uh, 
uh, that's cleared for I think it's around 19 applications with one one transducer, which is unheard of. Well, Hyperfine, as a sister startup to Butterfly, is doing something similar for MRI. Uh, we're taking MRI where it's never been before at uh, an extremely low cost. Uh, we're going to come directly to the bedside, come to the patient. I'm going to pause here and draw your attention to the um, the images. I'm just going to swap over and uh, start the broadcast from the iPad again so that you can see the final images. These are images using 100% of the data. Um, and I'm going to auto window and level that. And so what you're seeing here is um, a much crisper image than what you saw earlier. I can zoom in. I can see our patient was very cooperative and still. I can see the lens of her orbit there. Uh, if I pan around, I can see a much better depiction of the ventricles and sulci and gyri. The CSF, the cerebral spinal fluid, is bright as expected. I can also uh, scroll down to where the beginnings of the cervical spine are uh, at the lower part of the brain. And this isn't final, final reconstruction. It's counting down. It's about another 30 seconds or so. While it counts down to this final reconstruction, I'm going to show you a few other features here. Uh, we have a 3D rendering of the data that will get even better and a multi-planary format uh, where I can go through the sagittal view and scroll through. And I'll come back to this once we have our final reconstruction. So here you're seeing a nice sagittal view showing the midbrain structures and the brain stem. Or you can go to coronal as well. And we're very close to that final reconstruction. There it is. So you can see the, the uniformity of the image uh, improved quite a bit in this final reconstruction. I'll the return of the sagittal view. And you can see, uh, as I scroll through, a very good depiction of the cerebellum and the uh, brainstem. And of course, the original acquisition was in the axial plane. So that's the highest resolution input we have. And you can see it's very nice. Uh, there's also a 3D rendering. Uh, here, where uh, if you're looking for ventricle size, uh, you could uh, add a clip plane, uh, tip it forward, and actually scroll through to see a visualization of the ventricles. In 3D. And I'm going to go back over here, and uh, it says a green bar. I'm not going to hit the check mark, but this is the point at which if you did that, the emails will be sent, DICOM images will be uploaded to Hyperfine Cloud Packs, and any clinicians or team members that have access to that could see the images from any web enabled computer device in the world. So we're going to turn back to our subject and pretend now that she's a healthy subject and she'll unload herself. Uh, we're going to get that on, on camera here with, with our, our cameraman. Um, let's see, I'll, I'll help you. Uh, I'll help you today. Just trying to get our camera going again. You know what? I'm going to get it with my laptop. Over here. You just have to get the spotlight video. Yeah, I'm just one moment while we sort through a couple yeah, of camera right. issues here, and we'll show you the unloading of our MRI model uh, in the example of a healthy patient who will uh, self unload. All right, so now we're back. We have a camera. And uh, if this rotation, we could uh, have the strength and ability. Uh, we can put this on a scanner. And this is our policy. Excellent. Thank you very much for viewing. That concludes our uh, uh, demo of the world's first bedside point of care MRI for Hyperfine. Thank you very much.